Hey, I'm CEO. And I'm Alexia. I'm a rapper. And I'm his manager. And this is Behind the Struggle Podcast. So I wanted to dive right into this today because I thought it was interesting. And I honestly haven't heard anybody um, talk about it. And it could be like, it could go one of two ways, obviously. So I'm thinking it's easy for music to suck now because of how easy it is to have. The example, 25 years ago, there was shitty songs. And today, there are great songs. But back then, let's say, again, 25 years ago, or, or longer, tape players, you know, it was like a select, you had to, like, choose the tapes wisely that you wanted to carry around all day. And then, like, CD players, there was, like, more than, like, maybe less, because tra- tape players had two sides, but you could only carry, like, a couple CDs with you or have them in your car or whatever. And then when, like, you know, the first iPods came out, the first ones, I think, could only hold a thousand songs. And that's a lot compared to, like, you know, the 15 max you had on a CD. So, and then obviously the, it just kept um, improving from there. So what I'm saying is, you know, now that we have mu- music, I'm sorry, access to music, like, OD. And I'm talking, like, YouTube, streaming, whatever we download on our phones, whatever we literally, like, hear on the radio. There's so much access to music that all these artists these days don't need to put out a bomb track to make money because everything on the radio, I mean, when I was growing up, was awesome. Well, I think that has something to do more so, not so much with the music industry. The music industry plays a part in that, and I'll get into that. But I think that has more so to do now with social media and things trending. So when a certain song starts trending like it may be a no name rapper like um take that guy little nas x who had the old town road he like talked about how he w- was marketing that song and pushing it and he basically started creating memes with the record on like videos on instagram and tiktok until it started to go viral and it wasn't until that started to pick up the song started to gain traction then he got the record deal And then, you know, the labels came to them because they were like, okay, this guy already has something that's working. So now we're going to put our money and the machine that we have behind this guy so we can capitalize on this and make some money off of it. So I think that's definitely a part of it because social media, because as long as it starts trending, it doesn't matter if it's good or bad. If it's trending and it's making money, somebody's going to want to be a part of it because they want to make money, too. That's exactly what I'm saying. So, again, with the access aspect. Like, people back in, like, the 80s or 70s weren't able to do that. So if they were going to put music out, they either had to already have a reputation that was built on, like, stones and rubble or, like, you know, have it be so good that the general population was like, okay, this slaps. Because, like, I don't know if anyone loves Old Town Road, but that's not, like, the greatest song ever. So it's just, like, you're just saying exactly what I'm saying. Well... Here's something that you just brought up that does actually bother me about today's music. And I've noticed this since like the 2000s, like the early 2000s till now. I mean, there's certain artists that kind of transcend it. But going back to what you were saying, you look at like the 70s, the 80s and even the 90s, right? Some of these songs and albums that came out, you still listen to that music now. Like I use Michael Jackson as a perfect example. You listen to any of his music now, it's still good. Like, it's timeless. Like, you, like, oh, man, that's still a good record. Like, that still has a good recording, has a good feel to it. Like, there was actually a lot of thought put behind it. And, you know, Michael Jackson was one of those artists anyway. He was a once-in-a-lifetime artist. But now the attention span of people was so short that, oh, the new hot song that just came out is only hot for, like, a month, three months tops. And then after that, people are on to the next thing. So the music doesn't have the longevity anymore. It's more about let me put something exactly. out and be hot for the moment. It's not really going to land or like stand the test of time. Like no one five years from now is going to be like, yo, remember this classic that from back in the day? Because they're like, oh, it was just hot in that moment. That's what I'm saying. And because it's easily accessible. So my point is, if these artists today, like let's say, I don't know, Tyga, for example, had to compete with Michael Jackson. Let's say they were born in the same era. That's quite the comparison. <laughs> okay. I mean, obviously, you know, people that put their craft into the music, those songs are going to going to last more. Now, if we took away 
the social media and the marketing aspect, you know, back in the day, Tygo probably wouldn't be as oh, popular. I mean, for sure. But I think also another thing also is that artists back in the day, even if they sucked, they had no choice but to become good because they actually had to grind it out. Like, you actually had to be traveling on the road, doing the shows, performing at local bars. And even if it was a shitty song that you were doing, like, let's say, like, let's let's time travel for a moment. Let's say it's you and me back in, like, the mid-80s. And if one of my songs I made and I'm going out to these shows, performing them live, and then people are literally booing me on stage, I'm getting, like, direct feedback. I'm not getting like a trend that's like a hashtag or it's attached to some video. People are like this song sucks, and I'm like, okay, I have to get better. Like, like, there's no way you can get booed on stage and be like, ah, oh, they're fucking hating. Like, you have no choice but to get better because of the reaction that you're getting. And that's what I'm saying is the difference between artists then and now. Like, you could suck back then, but the audience would tell you, you suck. Like, we don't like this, so get better. Right. And that's what sucks about the industry. If the labels see that you're getting booed, they're not going to be like, go back to the drawing board. They're going to be like, pull pull out the money, you know, rip the contracts up. Let's find somebody else. Well, you know, the, the industry, the music industry in general is like a leech. They're just hopping on to whatever potential artist is hot. They don't give a shit about building artists anymore. And that was a, another thing back in the day as well. That's true. They actually used to build artists from the ground up. Like, okay, we're going to train you how to write songs. Like, we see you have potential. You got talent. You don't really know. But we're going to link you up with this producer. We're going to link you up with this songwriter. And we're going to make this great album. Here's, here's a song that someone ghost wrote. Here's a template. We want you to sing these lyrics. Like, you have the look and everything. We're going to push you. And, like, we're going to invest money into you. So this way we can get our money back. So this record can go platinum or double platinum or whatever. Now, record labels aren't doing that. They're like, hell no, we're not invested. We want a sure thing. Oh, um... Uh, little Yellow Dress got that new song out called Crocodile that's trending on TikTok. Uh, how, how many songs is this again? 500,000? Yo, someone reach out to him. Does he have a manager? No, all right, let's reach out to him, make a deal. It's because this thing is making money, and we need to capitalize on this right now. Okay, but what about the next song? I don't care about the next song. This song is blowing up. Let's push it. Let's get our money's worth, and then afterwards, on to the next guy. That's how it is now. Exactly. So that song doesn't have to be good at all as long as it's getting attention. And what's scary now, especially with TikTok, is negative attention is still attention. And that's going to make money whether they hate it or not. Yeah, this, this is true. You know, and that's because all, all the other aspects to it, you know, that come with that. You know, like, what was that song that guy did the rendition of? Like, why are you always lying? Like, that became like its own thing just because it was a funny yeah. like video or song to kind of use as a meme. And because of that, that kind of gave it new life. Right. So if like there wasn't streaming platforms like this and like not even CDs, if we went back to like vinyl records and tapes, I'm saying that none of this music would be as bad as it is because people would – and it not like music industry aside, people would be spending, I guess, more time and money on making a song regardless. So they would put actual art into it, like craft into it. Yeah, they, they would have to. I mean, look, there are people that still put money into stuff and believe it's good, but it's still crap. But you get that feedback. But kind of going to your point, yes, because of the accessibility, people can just like literally everything is at your fingertips now. You can just upload shit and that's it. Like, you don't even care. Like, you you don't have to spend money. Right. So if a song sucks, as long as it gets plays, it's going to make money. And it's just because people are too lazy to press skip or whatever. Because let's say this song does suck and it doesn't get plays. Next Friday, you just put on another song. You just keep putting out songs. And then one could be really shitty. And then someone just takes, like, a little exactly. audio clip of your song and does like those remixes. You see it all the time where they take like a video clip where they're like, um, yeah, like the two best two lines you had in there. They yeah. like, you know, remix it or like make it yeah. its own. And then video. they make yeah. oh the remix God. And it's like, you know, it's like, Oh, here it is. Like, you know, what's nine plus 10, 21. Like they make that a whole song. <laughs> yeah. 21. So my, yeah. So my point is it sucks for like struggling and or upcoming artists that actually have talent 
because not only are they not getting plays, it sort of encourages them to stoop down to this like caveman mentality level where they're making like stupid shit just like for attention instead of like you know making good music anymore and again not saying it doesn't exist at all there there is good music out there but i feel like it's definitely not as appreciated oh i agree with you 100 percent on that i mean you look at what's that that guy's name uh the kashi 69 well why i think he has horrible music <laughs> horrible music but like you your point to what you're saying wasn't well, about the music. It was all the antics surrounding it. He got six nine t- tatted on his body sixty nine times. He got rainbow colored hair. All this crazy stuff. Like the music isn't that good. But then he's with these drug dealers starting beefs and doing these features. I yeah, didn't even know still, all that. But that's, that's, how that's much my I point. Care. Is that he had to be all this crazy flashy for it to stand out? And it was because of that people were like, oh, the music's you know, the music's not that bad. Like, they were more entertained to follow, like, his life and his next antic. Like, oh, what's the next thing he's going to do? Exactly. Back in the day, Michael Jackson, you heard Michael Jackson was putting out an album or Biggie Smalls or Tupac. That's all you needed to know. It was the name. Oh, shit, Michael Jackson's dropping? Oh, shit, Biggie's dropping? Oh, Tupac's dropping? Oh, definitely got to check it out. Now it's like, Uba Gooba, who cares? Like, he has 500,000 plays on TikTok. I don't care about his who he is. Like, look at the numbers, though. Like, boom up. He's a celebrity. Like, that's what it is. Like, everything's like it's reversed. It's like they don't care about the talent. They care about the stats. So as an honest artist in that industry, like, you know, what are your struggles? Or like, what advice do you have for other people who are trying to stay true to the craft? Honestly, I would say just quit now while you're ahead. Get out. Wow. You know, um, it's really no hope. You get, like, they really want you to be just like a little monkey on stage and just <laughs> doing your little song and dance, making everybody laugh, and then your time is done. You know, keep it moving. Now, nah, uh, in a serious note, I think you know, uh, what I feel, honestly, is like stick, stick in your lane and do what you feel is true to you. You know, like if you want to do that silly stuff with a quick thing, then fine, to all means to it. Like, like, cause then your passion is not really in it. You're here for the money. You're here for a quick buck. But if you're an artist that actually cares about your craft, it will be shown. You know, the people who suck and the people who aren't that good. I mean, it's no coincidence that specifically in hip hop, the top guys that are always considered the top three in every generation are usually the most lyrical guys. Really? I mean, you look at it right now. The most lyrical guys is who are the top three right now? Drake, Kendrick Lamar, J. Cole. You could even throw Kanye in there if you wanted to because he's still relevant. But my point being is all those guys are lyrical rappers. They're not mumble rappers. They don't do, you know, like stupid songs like Soulja Boy, like Crank That Superman. Like it's thought provoking. There's actually meaning behind it. It's open, honest, expressive. And even though J. Cole may not have like a big smash single like in the club or like M&M's, you know, the real Slim Shady of this generation, they are considered the best. And why is that? Because at the end of the day, you take all the gimmicks away and all the glitz and fame. Can you actually rap? Can you actually do music? Like, are you actually good? That's what mm-hmm. it comes down to. I mean, look at the generation before that. It's the same thing. It was um, Biggie, Jay-Z, Nas, lyrical guys. After that, you had 50 Cent, Eminem, you know, lyrical guys. Eminem has still stood the test of time and still relevant. Jay-Z too. Why is that? Because they actually are lyrical. They actually know how to write lyrics. They know how to make a song. They weren't trend hopping. They stood in their lane and they kept it pushing. And though I'm not arguing about the top three and like the last three generations, but like those billboard numbers aren't like true oh yeah they're definitely inflated i mean billboard you actually had to put a lot of money just to get a number one song in the radio I, I think if i'm correct you had to pay radio to spin your record i think to get a song to go number one i think you had to at least invest a million dollars that's again backwards like <laughs> yeah but at the end of the day this is a music business industry you know so they're gonna find their ways to make their money and that's what it's all about. So to any like independent artist out there trying to come up and find their name, like if you're like for real about this craft and this is something that you genuinely care about and it's something that 
is innate within you. Like start your own label. I wouldn't even say start your own label, but like because then you're getting into like corporate business stuff. I mean, if that's something you want to do, that's fine. But hone so your what? skill. Sell yourself out or what? Hone your skill. Be good. Just be good. Period. Like actually be good if you actually care about your craft. Like take music out of it. If I was an artist that wanted to work on cartoons, but I actually liked drawing. So I like went to drawing classes and I wanted to, you know, like study the human form so I could create my own characters. There's already shown like behind that, that there's intention to want to better yourself. But if your goal is just to work on Blue's Clues, then just get good enough to work on Blue's Clues because that's all you want. There's no need for you to draw like so a I think way. the people that like intellects that like actually like matter more that they would see that, but like maybe not everyone else would. And that's fine, you know. Like, you know, we all we you and I both already know people. A majority of times, are followers, so they want a catchy beat, something that's you know, easily accessible, and they don't really care about all that in depth stuff. But when you look back at it. That's the stuff that lasts. Pause. That's the stuff that transcends time. Wow. <laughs> I mean, look, my film Redressed, I made that film in 2011. You know, I see the flaws in it, but I also see the good in it. And I also remember the effort that I put into that film at the time. I spent two and a half years making that movie. And when I show it to people now who don't know all the technical stuff, they're still able to enjoy it. And they kind of like takes them into that world for a little bit. But I know a lot of my uh, peers that were, you know, submitting films around that same time, they made a little short for it. Like, they, it doesn't really last. So I guess the, the whole point to answer your question, just give a damn about what you're doing and mm -hmm. it will shine through. Mm -hmm. Don't get caught up on the trends and trying to be hot because the trends change every time. I'm not negating the fact that back in the day, there were some trash songs. And today there are some amazing songs. So I'm just saying generally, music is like generally worse than it was decades ago because of the accessibility and maybe I guess the music industry. I, I, I wouldn't necessarily agree with that. I think the technology has gotten better, you know, to be able to do certain things that artists can do, you know. Um, you just agreed with me for 20 minutes, and now you're going to be like, mm, I disagree. Eh, aggressive. No reason. Can I, can I just say what I got to say? Because you're, say, yeah, you're saying Please, that go ahead. a lot more of it is trash now. And I'm saying that back in the day, a lot of it was good, but it took a lot more work to get to it. But it was coming from a select group of people. Now that... Right the tools are more accessible and far more advanced music has advanced to go to places that it could never went to back in the day. And that's all because of the artists today. So in your opinion, it's relative. Yeah. I would say it's relative. That's fair. Back in the day, if you could, uh, what are some songs that you think are like better than a lot of songs now? And what are some of the trash ones that you hear now? I'm curious. I mean, that is another reason I kind of brought it up because you and I grew up on opposite sides of the country. And we grew up listening to the same genre pretty, like, for the most part, but on opposite sides of the country. So that that is interesting. But, I mean, yeah, I feel like, you know, in my middle school, elementary school years, there were, like, I guess less artists. Like, I could, I could name them all. You know what I mean? And now, I mean, I don't know anyone's name anymore, but even if I did, there's so many that it's like, you know, my Gen Z little brother's like, oh, have you heard of blah, blah, blah? Have you heard of blah, blah, blah? And I'm like, no. And then he'll play the song and he'll be like, oh, I know this song, but I don't know who sings it, like, uh, whatever. But, like, obviously, you know, it depends on, like, taste and stuff. But since we're on the discussion of hip-hop, let's keep it there, you know? Like, okay. I think I, um, hip-hop and R&B, um... I hope this counts, but I I would never skip Cassie, Me, and You. Like, I would literally let that play every single time I came on. Um, I really liked a lot of T.I., Fabulous, and Ludacris. Obviously, Eminem. Like, there were few songs by them that I would skip uh, as well. Like, I thought they were, like, really good at what they did. So was Neo and Usher and Mario, I guess. 
But like, obviously, now I'm naming artists, not specific songs. So you're probably like in your little head. No, definitely not. Which is fine. But like <laughs> now, like what I would consider good, I guess there's it's a it's a different line now because I would consider good songs, but the songs that I memorized, you know, front to back, aren't the best songs, but they're better than like six nine. Does that make sense? All right, I see where you're coming from with that. I still think it is like subjective because also I think what music does is you may have a certain memory associated to it because of what you were going through at the time or you relate it to an experience. So because of that, that music is timeless to you because it reminds you of a certain time in your life. I guess it also might be that trash is more accessible to me too. So, like, back in the day when it was only a CD player and I had, like, the newest of the new, like, five CD player changer on shuffle in the living room, right? There was still only five CDs. But now I have access to everything. So I literally, I honestly couldn't tell you a song and an artist that I can't stand because, you know, my title will sometimes be on random and I'll hear a song and I'll be like, what the actual fuck is this i'm happy you told me that because i was actually going to ask you how do you come across or discover new music like it's usually referred to you by somebody else like a friend or your brothers or is it from you just listening to like shuffled playlists on streaming services like how do you come across new music i mean all the above but mostly it would be like those random shuffles so like i'm gonna be completely honest that's how i was introduced to Whit lowry because i was listening to eminem and then it changed to nf then it changed to ivan b then it went to hobson then it went to Whit lowry and i was like ooh. so Whit lowry was a great a great discovery but like if i go through my title playlist and like literally read some of this shit to you it, it would like i <laughs> like sometimes i don't I'm too lazy to press skip or, or my phone is in the other room and I'm listening with headphones, right? So, like, it is what it is. But I would literally have to be like, what the actual fuck am I listening to? And come and, like, turn it off. There's a couple times, too, where I put, like, don't ever play this song again. So, I, and again, if you told me to, like, sing these songs or give the, I have no idea. But this one's called Creep When I Step by Spot Him Got Him. Okay. Got Him. <laughs> and then this one's called Four, like the number four, Duh Gang by 42 Doug and Roddy Rich. I don't know why I hated that. I had to block it. And then Hellcats and Track Hand. I don't know because it's blocked, so I can't read the whole thing. Hellcats and Track Hands. I don't know by Only the Family and Lil Dirk. I know who Roddy Rich is, I guess, but, like, I couldn't pick him out of a lineup. I've heard the name Little Dirk, but, again, couldn't pick him out of a lineup. The other three, I have no clue who they are. And these songs had to have been so bad that I actually blocked them because I didn't skip them. I blocked them. All right, let, let me ask you something. In your opinion, I think this is subjective. It's based on taste. What makes a good song to you, or what is it when you hear a song for the first time or that makes it catch your attention? So they're like, ooh, what is this? It either has to be thought-provoking and lyrical, but, like, clear, concise, and understandable. Like, I guess, um, what's his name? L uh, Lil Baby? Da Baby? I don't, I don't remember. He um, actually has good lyrics, but I can't understand what he says. So it's hard for me to be like, oh, that was a good song, because he literally, like, raps like that, and it's so annoying. Um that or like obviously it has to be like very happy optimistic like catchy like in the club so there's obviously different moods and different tastes but like um there's i you know not that i would play these songs like at a family function but you know like that get on the floor and shake your ass girl like that's not a great you know lyrical song but like it's a good like you know club song so I, I'm a, I'll fuck with that, but for you, obviously lyrics matter big time, which is there's nothing nothing wrong with that. Um, Heavy, I guess for me, I'm thinking about like the first ten to thirty seconds. Like, what's what is it that's hooking you? Because like I guess sonically, because for me, the lyrics may be like subpar. They may not be like groundbreaking, thought provoking, like shot of my world lyrics, but the sound of the record 
may catch me and it like kind of has a certain feel to it and kind of gives off a certain vibe so i'm like oh i like this song because it feels like summer and i can appreciate that but i definitely don't listen for that wow okay that's interesting because that, that's why i was wondering you know what is it that catches your attention because i know lyrics are a big thing for you but i highly doubt like you're like going through like shuffling songs and like all right mm, i'm not like this next song two seconds and it's like lyrical miracle spiritual criminal sin like, oh yeah this is my stuff right here it's so lyrical one second in just going at it but that's what i'm saying if it's like that like too fast or like too mumbled and i can't understand it you could have the best lyrics in the whole motherfucking world and i'll be like skip because if i'm listening to a song like you know, audio only, like, let's say the, the lyrics don't start for the first 25 seconds. I'm not saying I'll skip it. Like, I can appreciate it, but not to the point where I'm like, oh, that's the, that's the synth. Oh, that's the bass. Like, oh, this is the, you know what I mean? Like, I have no, I got the beat and the rhythm. Like, that's it. <laughs> so I'm not like, oh, this was a masterpiece because I don't know. Not yet. So, so I was, based on what I'm hearing, you're a very casual listener. You know, you're not like really going in depth and like, oh man, like the production on this is like really good. And that you're like, yo, as long as like the beat is good and you're on beat with the lyrics and you got a good flow and what you're actually saying is catching my mind, like that's it. I'm not really going any deeper into like, oh wait, what's the deeper concept of this song? I mean, I guess so. You make me sound like a basic bitch, but like that's kind of what it is. But if a song sucks, then I'll be like, the production is trash. It sounds like ass like i would go into like how bad it is but i if you were like what's your favorite song you know i'd be like uh, there's a lot like i don't know no i'm not just wondering because you know there's like there are a lot of songs that you know may not be commercially well or the most catchy but they speak to you personally you know and i think for that reason alone that makes like a good song like some of my favorite songs on certain albums are like, you'll never hear them. Like, they'll never be a music video. They'll never be, like, played in the club. But it's, like, a deep cut on the album. And I'm like, oh, man, like, I mess with this song heavy. That's fine, and I would too. But, yeah, it'd be like if I got exposed to it or whatever, you know? Yeah, because to me also what's important is that sometimes um, the story or the message that the artist is trying to get across. And this is something, my, me personally, that I struggle with as an artist yeah but today's age like people aren't listening for that but that's exactly that nowadays people are not listening to that so it kind of goes back to the question you were asking earlier it's like people don't really care about the creativity or the story you're trying to tell i just want you to you know hook me in real quick give me something catchy that i can remember and that's it so because of that the music is being compromised so really is it the artists that suck more, the attention span of the audience has lessened. Facts. Because they just want the same jingle over and over again. They want something catchy, less lyrics. Think about it. Back in the day, rap songs used to be three verses and then a hook. Now a rap song is a verse and a half, two verses tops. Ooh, I'm glad you brought that up. Yeah, I was thinking about that too the other day. Like, every time I'm listening to a song and I'd be like, damn, they played the chorus four times. Have you noticed? And that pisses me off. But that's the thing. <laughs> the attention span of the audience has also lessened. So that's what I mean. Like, there's a song by Nas that I really like. Sonically, it's not the most impressive song. It's not like, oh, man, this beat is really good or, like, his flow is really crazy, but it's the story that he's telling. You know, the song is called Rewind, and he's basically telling a story that starts at the ending and goes back to the beginning, and he's saying all the lines backwards. You know, so instead of saying, there he go, he'll say, go he there. Oh, my God, that's doing the most. But it's super creative. It's like, oh, wow, like, that's really dope. Like, that's really, like, smart how you go about that. Okay, but that'd be something you'd have to, like, sit in your room and pretty much listen to alone. Because if you listen to it. But that's what I'm saying. That's a deep cut on the album. That's a deep cut. All right. But that's what I'm saying. As an artist, that's one of the things you like to appreciate about certain artists, the creativity to do that. Like, wow, who would think? To, like, create a song like that and do it backwards. You know, oh, yeah, I'm going to do the whole thing like this. You know, it's like... Right. And you know that's not going to get commercial right. success, but you as an artist, that's a challenge to you to create a song like that. Like, oh, I want to know if I can pull that off. It's impressive from a creative standpoint. Like, oh, that's an interesting concept that you did that. Right. That's interesting. So I think that's kind of the challenge that we're facing with now today. It's like, 
artists who want to express themselves a certain way, but they still have to make it accessible for an audience to want to listen to it. So we have to kind of strike that balance. Like me as someone who grew up in the nineties, listening to the boom bat rap and Eminem and 50 cent and all these other guys, you know, I'm very big on lyrics on the 16 bar format, but I understand how music is now that, you know, a lot of songs have a transition or like a, a beat change, like midway. The production is a lot more elaborate and a lot more rappers are singing or adding melody to their stuff. Because a lot of people don't want to be bombarded with a bunch of lyrics, you know, unless you're like already super crazy established. I'm talking to you, Eminem, because at that point, and I'm not taking anything away from his talent, super talented rapper. But my point is like a new guy who came on the scene rapping like Eminem, no one's going to listen to it. Eminem can only do because Eminem has been doing this since the 90s. He's like, oh, yeah, he's just this, this household name at this point. It's not Joe Smo from off the block. But my point to that is that mm -hmm. a lot of people are not really trying to hear that. So us as artists have to find like this middle ground. Like I'm always told, yo, you rapping too much. You rap too much. Like you should sing more. Really? Oh, you should be a little bit more melodic. Yeah. I'm told that a lot, you know, and it kind of like it messes with me because I don't feel so super confident in my singing voice. But musically, I understand it. Like, well, Why not? Let's hear it. <laughs> this is like something I learned with like rap battles as opposed to making a song. So with rap battles, every bar has to count like because you're going against somebody. So you don't really have time to like build up to some one punchline and just waste all like you've seen it in the battles that I've had with certain people. They're just rhyming words and then it finally gets to a punchline where mine is like every other line is hitting you, if not every line. But you have to be witty with it. So every line has to count. But when someone's listening to a song and they just want to enjoy it, it's more of the melody that sticks with you. So, like, you have to find a, be a way to be more melodic. They're like, oh, that's catchy. I remember it. Like, yeah, yeah, that's true. That song by Pharrell. Because I'm happy. It's like, I don't know the rest of the lyrics. Yeah, but the thing is, the melody is good. Like, you, you know it. Like, even if I don't know the words, like, mm -hmm. It's like, oh, yeah, I know that song, but you know it because the melody is good. That song is so annoying. What are the lyrics? I don't know. Clap along if you feel like your roommate got a roof. Is that it? But that's something I've learned, that, like, music has to be more melodic, you know, that kind of, like, brings you in. I mean, I think a really good example of that, if we're going to go bring it back to hip-hop, and this is something that kind of, you know, walk that line perfectly. It was conceptual. It told a story, but it was accessible. And I'm talking about Eminem Stan. Mm -hmm. Told a story about a fan who was crazy, obsessed with a certain artist, but it still had an accessible, catchy melody to it with the hook from Dido. So even if you don't know all the lyrics, but I do the mood. Yeah, yeah, but I'm saying, but <laughs> everyone else is like the first thing you know when you hear that song is you think of the hook from Dido. Yeah. And it's like, oh, and you have to think of the sound of the rain. So it already, like, created this atmosphere. And then M just, like, kind of told the story through it. But he did it on a commercial type of, you know, production, which when you hear it, people know what it is. Like, now, that's not a club song. That's not, you know, like a super fire club bang or nothing like that. But it's a great record. Creatively, it's done well. That was a good story. It has a twist at the end. And it's catchy. I'm not going to tell people every rap song that comes out from this day on needs to sound like Stan because that's going to be a very boring sound really quick. Like it works for that one song. But that's the point I'm trying to get at. Melody is very important when creating actual songs. Y'all hear that? Melody. Rap, you know, is rhythm, you know, so. And poetry. In a certain way. <laughs> in motion. <laughs> but <laughs> that's what it is. So when you're rapping on a beat, you have the instrumental and I kind of want you guys to think of it this way. This is the way how I approach it. Your voice is just another instrument on top of another series of instruments. Just another audio line, you know. So you just need to find a way into it. And something I've been learning a little bit more, what a lot of like amateur rappers do is they sit in pocket of the beat a little too much to the point where the beat is leading them. Yeah. But as opposed to you leading the beat. You could still be on beat, but have your own rhythm that kind of like stands out. Just talk to them. But that's what it is. And it's like, link in description. Find these ways to highlight that. And something I've learned as a rapper is that depending on the beat, like 
Kendrick Lamar did it very well on Money Trees. He's like, me and my niggas finna to get it, you bitch. You bitch. And he kind of keeps, he coached on that melody for a majority of the record, but because it works. But majority of the time, you want to switch up your flow every four to eight bars. Mm -hmm. So this way, you know, your audience is still kind of staying on their toes and they don't know which way you're going to go. Because at the end of the day, you're steering the ship. But if you just stay the same way, it's going to get real boring really quick. Speaking of that, you have a little, like, I don't know, freestyle or a little verse oh, man, for us? Guy. Uh, yeah, <laughs> I could do something. Uh, I'll wrap it up really quickly. Yay! But I just want to make this last point. Oh. And uh, I think it kind of touches into what you were saying. Like, some rappers, you know, aren't, like, super, super lyrical. Like, uh, recently Kanye isn't that lyrical. But... His production is, you know, second to none. It's on point. So when your lyrics, you're not able to switch the flow like that, like an Eminem would on a rap god or, you know, kamikaze or anything like that, or Joyner Lucas, then the thing that you need to switch in order to keep your audience's attention is the beat. So switch it up. So a minute and a half into it, oh, bring in like a chorus that just kind of like, like just amplifies everything or the beat switches to be more up tempo, you know. Um, well, you know, tell them be careful with that too, because I think the Kendrick's latest album he did that a lot, but it worked like only half of the time. The other half, I was like, "What are you doing?" Like, I liked it. You think every single beat switch was like fire? I would say beat switch, but it definitely like kept my attention. I was like, "Oh, okay, this is not the same thing." That's being observant. That's not keeping your attention. Here's one that I would say I think has a good beat switch. And it's almost like two two completely contrast opposites of a vibe. Drake. Yeah, Drake's song, 0 to 100, <laughs> real quick. At first, I go 0 to 100, nigga, real quick. And then the, and you, then it changes, yeah. you know, to like that other sign. It gets more mellow. All right. There's no chorus. He's just rapping. But it's like at that point, you already got your catchiness. You already got your hook. You already got like the jingle. So now when it switches into this, like you've already invested enough time to it. So now you want to hear the rest of it out. But with that said... I'm going to wrap it up because I don't want to drag it on too much. And instead of talking, I'll show it an example. So here's a verse that I had uh, written that kind of showcases a couple, like, flow switches. So uh, without further ado. Thank you. Thanks. Here we go. I me, 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 not them, them, them. I do what I say, dip it, ten, ten, ten. They follow the trend, but with that shit ends. So I played out like spinning rims on the new kid on the block. I rock the mic, I live with type and don't wipe all right, just me. In the words I speak, no gimmick, just spirit as a rhyme on beat. I'm motivated, they're elevated, they're very dated, which is just always saying every day is what they playing on the radio. You know how it goes, talk about money, whole same old, same old. Like, there ain't nothing new when this site to help them write the day, go recite on the mic, and they're like, I'm hating, but I'm saying we could use some change, man. Song that they're more engaging. They come out the church like, amen. Give a little inspiration, but the picture that y'all painting with these words so absurd. No wonder record sales took a downward turn. Ooh! That, yeah, you switched up the the flow on that like three times. Yeah, that's that's the point. <laughs> you see, chimps. So with that said, guys, um, <laughs> hopefully you enjoyed this episode, and uh, we'll catch you guys on the next one. I'm CEO. Come back for more. Follow us on the gram. Follow me on TikTok. Wow. <laughs> Follow my YouTube channel behind and the and struggle. Subscribe to our YouTube channel behind the struggle. Oh. Make sure you subscribe oh. to our podcast. And uh, definitely <laughs> sign up to our Patreon. Thank you guys so much for listening. Love you, chimps. Peace. Bye.